your ears are different, man, than anybody else's. How do you get individual measurements of your headphones and then how to use them? You gotta have an account for the measurements of your headphones. Download it, our EW software, something like that, on a half measure. So let me show you around. Hello, Olo friends. How to get individual measurements of your Olo headphones? Coming up. So before we are going into how to get the measurements, let's talk about how you can actually use them and what they actually mean. So why does it make sense to understand uh, measurements or you know, frequency response of any playback system in reality? For one, you can compensate for it. So if, for example, your room has a, a deep or a bump at certain frequency, let's say maybe 70 Hertz or something, uh, you can compensate. Uh, for that in two ways. One way would be just, you know, thinking about it, knowing, knowing that it's there, and just, you know, when you hear in your mix there's like a 70 hertz slight boost, you just leave it there because it's, it's there because of the room. It's not really in your mix, right? And the same goes for, for the headphones. The other way of thinking about it is or compensating a, a problem in a frequency response is to use uh, some sort of EQ, so some digital signal processing probably, on your master channels, right? And you can compensate this if you know what it is, meaning you have to measure your room or you have to, in case of headphones, you have to rely on the measurements that you can get online uh, or you get your <laughs> headphones individually measured and then you try to plot it out. But the biggest issue with these measurements is the question, that's really burning the audio industries you know what is actually flat. So that's a big question. I'll touch on this question further down the road with other vlogs. For this one, it's important to go into how to get these measurements and then how to use them. So let me show you around. All right, so how do you get individual measurements of your headphones? First of all, you gotta have an account with Ola Audio, meaning you gotta go to our webpage and log in. If you don't have it, you have to register. So I'm assuming you are already our customer if you're looking for measurements of your headphones, right? So you click on the little icon on top right, in the top right corner, and you log in. If you don't have your account, or uh, you can always create one. When you sign in, you get all your all your orders, your account details, and down at the bottom, you have two links. And one of the links is gonna take you to a Google Drive folder where you'll be able uh, to search for the measurements of your headphones by serial number. So you can just search drive and, and find whatever your serial number is, download it. And the second link is gonna take you to a freeware, which is our EW software that's gonna open that file. And you can get it for, for Windows, Mac, or Linux, which is awesome. All right, let's just go and do this now. You can open it with the REW software. Um, obviously, you wanna click over here to get the full, the full spectrum. And then you can adjust the scale depending on how much details you wanna see you can use it in different ways, right? So if you have a, a very a very large scale like this one, um, it, it's almost a flat line, right? And of course, this is not very accurate. Uh, it doesn't have the resolution you would need to make decisions on how to compensate this headphone. Uh, but again, if you go the other way around, it doesn't make much sense either, right? So for example, a chart like that, doesn't really explain anything and you can put whatever headphones on a planet into a, an extreme zoom and they're never gonna be flat. 10 dB scale is something that kind of represents how the headphones sound the best in my opinion. Meaning in this case uh, it's the S4R model. Uh, I can see that this headphone is very nice. Um, it has a dip at 400, which is a, a resonancing dip from the closed cabinet, um, which is something you're gonna see in many headphones. 
uh, many closed headphones, for example, the, the M50s uh, from Audio Technica or the DT7070s, and have a very dominant resonance over there. Um, and then there's a, a little bass boost, we can see that clearly. It's probably about 5 dB, 4.5, 5 dB of a boost at the low, low frequency area. We're getting pretty close to a, an ideal flat, all the way up to about 4, 4, 4.5. And, and then there is a dip again at 7, which is something that many Sennheiser products have. And then there is a nice uh, little bump over 10k um, to get some presence in there. All right, so how do you use this measurement, this file, um, in your studio? How do you compensate based on measurements? You take the center of the plot, right? So you kind of find it and balance it nicely, right? So what is a boost and what is a dip? it kind of have, has to balance nicely. You can do that in a math mathematical way if you really wish to, um, but I think just you know finding it with your eyes is good enough. I think that this headphone would need a compensation of 48 to 55, that means 7 dB tolerance or deviation from the zero point in the low area. So I would enter uh, or try to mimic or copy that um, in, uh, in the EQ, right? So I would find the highest point, which is in this case 100 Hertz, and then I'm gonna model, try to get to a similar curve, right? Something like that, yeah. And keep in mind, I will not go all the way 7 dB off. Um, I'll do that on a half measure, right? So it's seven, I'm just gonna take out about four, three and a half, four, something like that. This little bump over here, I'm not gonna compensate for. Um, I don't really think it's gonna matter. I'm just gonna compensate a little bit over here at the seven. So at around seven, uh, I'll set this one to 7K. I will have a, a nice little boost at probably about Q set to about two and I'll boost it up. And again, I'm not gonna go all the way. I will only go two and a half to be, right? And that's pretty much it. That's all I'm gonna touch to compensate. The reason not to go and copy it directly is in the way that the speaker membrane responds, that in a way that acoustic is responding to an input signal, right? So, for example, if we take out the 100 hertz, like we did here, this is gonna affect how much harmonics there are gonna be. It's gonna affect how much room it's gonna be in, in the ear cup for other frequencies, right? So when we are removing the low frequency, which is very high in, in energy, it takes a lot of space, a lot, of, uh, it's very dominant compared to other frequencies, right? So when we are taking it away, other frequencies will start to have more room and will develop nicer, nicer. I don't really recommend that you would just reverse the graph that you get from us. It's not gonna sound good. All right, so before you start doing that, keep in mind that everybody hears differently. The way I hear frequency ranges is different than the way you hear it. And the way headphones are measured is using simulations that are trying to get somewhere in the middle of all this. In reality, it's impossible to have a true measurement that would actually represent what you are gonna hear and what you're gonna experience. So the only way uh, to use this in a way that makes sense, in my opinion, would be to try it out. So download the measurements from our webpage uh, try to make a compensation curve the way I've just showed you, so not the full scale, just half measures. So for example, when there is a 6 dB boost, you just do it uh, at a 3 dB cut. Uh, the reason for that are total harmonics and the way that acoustics uh, actually work in a headphone. And again, keep in mind, it's not necessarily more flat um, because it's just your ears are different, man, than you know anybody else's. So what you hear and consider flat 
is something that is completely different to me and is definitely completely different to whatever measurement um, there is. So, all right, stay safe, everybody. Until the next time, cheers. <laughs>